Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lent. I'm on location today at the American Red Cross West Sound at 811 Pacific Avenue, downtown Bremerton. Two special guests today. I have Carolyn Stein, who's going to tell us about the Washington State Engineering and Science Fair. And I have Karen McKay-Beaver, who is the Executive Director for the American Red Cross. Stay with me. Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lent. I'm on location today and I'm downtown Bremerton, actually at the American Red Cross. My first guest is going to be Carolyn Stein, and we're going to talk a little bit about our Science and Engineering Fair. It's the Washington State Science and Engineering Fair. This is our 56th year. Correct. Carolyn, just tell me, you grew up here. <laughs> How did you get involved with this event? Oh, about 12 or 13 years ago, a couple of friends came to me and said, oh, we're doing this science and engineering fair, and we really need someone to come and help with the marketing. We want someone to come and help uh, promote the fair beyond our borders of our city and our county area, and we want to make sure that we get uh, better scholarships and different things for our kids. So I said, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll come on for a short time. Well, that short time kind of turned into <laughs> 13 years. And how did Dr. Huey get involved? He's quite um, a supporter himself. Absolutely. Dr. Huey is our president of our board, and he's also our head judge. Uh, as a lad, he was in a science and engineering fair, and so it's just a kind of a way that he can promote that now because he knows the value, he knows the benefit. And it actually started at Crown Hill Elementary. No, at View Ridge. View Ridge Elementary, and then from there it was at Olympic College. And there. we've outgrown all of those spaces, and now Bremerton High School allows us to have, last year, 525 exhibitors or science projects. Projects, and so it was more like approximately almost 600 students, because some of them are teams. Mm -hmm. And so the school district, uh, we work very closely with them. They're STEM-focused, and so are we, so it's a good fit. We're very proud to um, partner with them and to promote STEM in our area and uh, at the school this year. And this year, we're anticipating the growth. Last year, in 2012, we had 125% growth. Nice. So we're anticipating you know, a 600 plus students this year. We won't know until registration really closes, and that won't happen for a while. How do students get the word out? Do they have to have a science project in a science fair in their school, or can a homeschooled person also participate? Ooh, we're eligible. Every child grades 1 through 12 can participate. Public, private, parochial, homeschool, charter school matters not. Every child in Washington State grades 1 through 12 can participate. And the benefits are, are just, they're endless to these students. They um, do not have to participate at a school fair. They simply need a project. And when they bring that project in, um, I know that last year you started a, a film you had a film showing that had all kinds of things related to science and engineering. Tell us a little bit about the filming program. Well, actually what we're doing is a, it's a free science film festival. Festival. And uh, it's open to the public. We are inviting everyone from the public. We want you to come. We want you to participate and enjoy the movies. The movies are not um, what you would consider um, very you know, heavy or that. They're um, October Sky. There's some great um, roving Mars movies. Uh, Legends of Flight, which is produced by the Boeing Company, one of our major sponsors is there. It's a wonderful opportunity to see IMAX films without the eye. They're, they're done on the big screen and is uh, presented by Boxlight, another one of our sponsors. And uh, they provide the wonderful projector that makes the films just come alive. That is exciting. And so if they're not walking through the gymnasium and seeing all of the different projects, they're actually, they can sit into the auditorium and watch the films. Absolutely. There are films starting approximately at 4.30 uh, Friday afternoon, April 5th, and all day uh, Saturday on April 6th, and the public's invited, and it's a great place to come and uh, just kind of spend some time. Bring the family. It's very family-oriented, and it's free. It's the best, um, you know, opportunity yet to have a good outing with the kids. Mm -hmm. Some exciting thing is that everyone that participates and is awarded an award. There's a group of people that over several years have been the promoters of that and they come out of Seattle and who gives out those hundred, hundreds of awards? 
Uh, uh, well, we have um, a good team. First of all, all of our judges, our volunteer judges, everyone um, can judge. We need volunteer judges. Please volunteer and judge. And uh, once that goes through, we have a committee that volunteers again to set up the award ceremony, which starts at 5.30 for grades 1 through 6 and is immediately followed for grades 7 through 12 mm -hmm. on Saturday, uh, uh, April 6th. Mm -hmm. And um, the, each first place child receives a trophy. And you can have more than one trophy in a grade because each project is judged on their own merits. And these trophies are supplied every year by another one of our great sponsors, mm -hmm. uh, Eureka Masonic Lodge Number 20, F-A-N-D-M, out of Seattle. And uh, we're very proud to partner with them. They'll send judges over as well. Um, and the judging, I know that I've judged in the elementary si side of um, some of the projects, but the Lions Club has come out, um, different businesses have sponsored judges. Correct. And then we have some major judges from the Boeing Company, from Bonneville, NASA. We've got someone coming back, not to judge, but one of the first recipients. Yes. And who's that young man? Oh, uh, that would be Jim Pace. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few years ago, um, I guess we're 56 years old, so we're not telling tales on ages, but uh, one of our earliest recipients, uh, Jim Pace, will be on hand. And he will be there and he'll present the People's Choice Award and he'll explain to the kids and the public what it's like and what science and engineering, how important it's been to his life and how it's changed. Oh, and so we're real excited to see him there. And we have a lot of hands-on activities that'll be there for the kids. Uh, there'll be the Tacoma Astronomical Society will be there for stomp rockets. We have the uh, Lake um, Washington uh, uh, Ham Radio Club will mm -hmm. be there um, doing call cards. So uh, that'll be fun. Um, we have uh, just a, a, a number of hands-on activities. But beyond all of that, we'll also have displays that are uh, from our educational institutions um, that I'll put up uh, brochures or people in that. Several colleges, four-year colleges, yes. because there also is a monetary reward. I was there the last few years and it was over a million dollars in scholarships. I saw a young boy in the seventh grade receive $15,000 scholarship. Um, it's worth seeing and it certainly does give that little spark to um, our young students to stay involved with science and engineering because that's where so much of our future is and the Absolutely. careers for our young people. Absolutely. We're very pleased. Uh, we have more than $1.8 million in scholarships, awards, and prizes that are 100% donated that are available to our students. Now, these are not gifted to our students. They earn this. They work these projects. Mm -hmm. They stand there and they present them to the judges. They work really hard on their projects and they deserve every one of those awards and we're very proud that they can have them. Um, we do have major sponsors um, that are in our area. We're always looking for sponsorships because we are a volunteer board. But uh, better, we have people that come and travel. You gotta remember, 92% of all participants travel to Kitsap County, to Bremerton, to attend this fair. They stay in our hotels, they eat in our restaurants, they go to the museums and the parks. For some of these kids, they've never seen salt water before. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, amazing tribute to the ideas that we have dedicated parents and teachers in school districts that will send them to our area. And it's really awesome that we have Bremerton School District and STEM in our area that's promoting this. We're pretty proud. It's something that we want to continue to host this um, Washington Absolutely. State Science and Engineering Fair. We invite you to join us the first weekend in April. April 5 and 6. 5 and 6. And um, if you would like to be a judge, please watch on the screen. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. Thank you. Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lent. I'm on location today at the American Red Cross West Sound office, downtown Bremerton, and my special guest is Karen McKay Beavers. She is the executive director and she not only works diligently with AmeriCorps and lots and lots of volunteers. Let's learn more about it. Karen, how did you land in Bremerton? Well, it's, it's funny now that I work for Red Cross because I met my husband on an airplane after the earthquake of 2001. Mm -hmm. Long story short, we ended up uh, getting married and moving to Bremerton. Uh, he teaches uh, in North Mason School District and when we decided to uh, settle as a couple and 
choose a place to raise our family, we chose Bremerton. How nice, and you've mm -hmm. got two little tykes. We do, I have a two-year-old, Keith, and a four-year-old, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. So I've known you before that. Um, you have a leadership council, mm -hmm. which I serve on, and I've been there since probably 2003. You've been the executive director for how many years? Just a year and a half. A year and a mm -hmm. half, but before you served on the board. I did, and that's how we first met. Mm -hmm. And you've done some marketing for um, major companies. I did. I started my career in Seattle uh, with uh, a large advertising agency, and I was in the public relations department. And I also did cooperative marketing and promotions. And uh, in that time, I worked with Cirque du Soleil, uh, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, um, Ronald McDonald House and McDonald's and mm -hmm. it was there that I kind of figured out where, what my next career step which was uh, hopefully nonprofit mm -hmm. and it served you well because you've done an immaculate job there have been major changes within our American Red Cross how we raise funds mm -hmm. and one of the one thing that we do here in Bremerton is we have the heroes breakfast tell us a little bit about the dates the time and what we expect to happen on okay. that day well, the Heroes Breakfast is our signature event, and uh, we it, we have one one fundraising event a year. Uh, but this event is more than a fundraiser; it's also a, a, a wonderful community event. We want to bring people together, and at this event, we celebrate uh, local people who have done extraordinary things in their everyday lives to help other people. Mm -hmm. um, they're people that are nominated by others in the community, and they represent the mission of, of American Red Cross. So, we have people who've saved lives, people who've um, dove into the sound to save someone who was being pulled out by uh, by the tide um, all um, amazing amazing stories that are just very very uh, touching and uh, so we uh, we fill uh, the Kitsap Conference Center uh, we've got about 300 people uh, coming in and um, we celebrate these heroes we have breakfast it's a little early we have uh, registration <laughs> starts at 630 and the event itself starts at 730 and uh, we have it wrapped up by about 845 but it's just a wonderful time to celebrate um, these amazing people they're people like you and I everyday people that just were put in situations where they um, step up and took some risks themselves and helped help someone else out and uh, it's just a, it's a really uh, special day and a wonderful time too to recognize our volunteers um, who do the same thing every single day um, here in West Sound and around the country and around um, the globe for other people uh, Red Cross couldn't do what we do without our volunteers, volunteers. so we're gonna have a number of those at the breakfast this year nice. uh, telling their story and interacting with the, the guests to, to talk a little bit more about the work they do because uh, many of our volunteers are kind of the silent heroes mm -hmm. of Red Cross. They're behind the scenes people that get up any time of the night if they're on call um, to show up on, on site when there's been a house fire or another local disaster and they very often don't l want or like recognition uh, and so I'm trying to encourage them to come to the breakfast and, and be Red Cross ambassadors and to tell their story for the for our guests that are there so people can really understand the amazing work these, these people do um, every day. Uh, here in our community. You know, that's great. One of the things is I have seen, I've been to that Kira's Breakfast for a number of years, and when you have a youngster that actually can call 911 or can perform something that they learned in the school from an educator from the mm -hmm. Red Cross. So Steve is someone that goes out into the community and he is t training and teaching some well, of the students. Well, we actually have two full-time AmeriCorps that are full-time youth educators. Mm -hmm. And we'll reach probably between six and 7,000 youth in West Sound this year. And we have two programs that we teach. We have a basic first aid. So we'll go in and teach about bandaging and, and signs to watch for with an injury. Um, and that's it's age appropriate, so it's, it's, it's uh, it's developed for kids, it's very interactive, and it's intended for that younger audience. And then we also have a Passport to Preparedness program, and it is a program all about disaster preparedness. And they go through, it's, it's very interactive, very visual, and they take home with them a passport, and it has exercises they can do with their family. And if they have a parent or guardian sign that, and they bring it back, they get a prize. Oh, and wow. our hope there is that we not only plant that seed for those young people about the importance of being prepared, but we want them to take that message home and plant that seed with their parents and we hope that they'll take that step to have a family communication plan and a family disaster plan and it's done in a way that's fun and age appropriate so uh, we certainly don't want to scare any little little people sure. but um, it's the kids have a great time and um, we just we've uh, grown the program tremendously the last couple of years uh, the words getting out and uh, I think the teachers enjoy it as much as the kids right I know on the breakfast 
Um, the breakfast is complimentary, but you look for sponsors, mm -hmm. sponsors that can um, um, have a larger donation that really does make a difference. And then the people have a donation, so there's always some at the table that says, we'd like you to contribute to the American right. Red Cross. Um, however, you um, are now reaching out for those sponsors, aren't you? We are. And when does the breakfast take place? Well, the breakfast is May 9th. Yes. That's a little later this year, and we're excited about that because we have a number of our volunteers that uh, are snowbirds, and they'll be back and be able to join us for the breakfast this year. Yes. Um, so it's May 9th, and uh, we're, we're looking for not only sponsors, uh, and the sponsors are so important because they cover the, the cost of the breakfast, so then every dollar that comes in uh, from attendees can go to directly to clients service and to the, support the programs uh, of American Red Cross. So sponsors are critical. The other thing we're doing this year is we've uh, doubled the number of table captains. And these are folks, there's no cost up front to commit to a friendship table, mm -hmm. but these table captains agree to bring nine guests, family members, friends, business associates. Um, and there's, again, it's not a ticketed event, so people don't have to pay up front, but we do ask that they make a, a, a meaningful uh, mm -hmm. donation, something that's meaningful to them at the event. And so we've got about, we're up to almost 20 table captains this year exciting and I'm excited because I'm trying to find folks from all parts of the county all parts of the area that we serve and asking them to bring their their friends and family to this breakfast so we can make sure that we're touching every corner of this community that we serve that's your marketing background <laughs> you know how to do this outreach um, I do know isn't that just the week before Mother's Day you know as a mother I should know that and I think it is <laughs> but the, week the before reason Mother's I bring Day. that is I know that in your location downtown Bremerton on Pacific you actually have and you have online as well where you can buy disaster preparedness mm -hmm. um, kits anywhere from a small kit that you'd have in your desk drawer to something you'd have in your closet or in the trunk of your car I can't think of anything better to give as a gift is if you're trying to take and make a, a, a a difference yes, and, and I, a gift of preparedness I think that's great so this is something that we can also say that's um, worthwhile and you'll be giving you'll see online that they'll have a website for them to go on that mm -hmm. for a volunteer if someone wanted to volunteer for the Red Cross mm -hmm. how do they do that we have a new online volunteer application process we are almost paperless and if they volunteered in another area as well we can transfer their records in but you go to redcross.org and you can click on become a volunteer. And there's a simple application that starts the process and then we bring folks in and give them an orientation, tell them about what opportunities exist and, and some of the, the guidelines that we have in Red Cross and if they still want to continue, we then have an interview process to find out what uh, department or what program might be a good fit. And we, we have people um, who volunteer with us on a regular basis. We have people that help out in the office, help out with events, um, and we have folks that are um, disaster volunteers that are on call um, throughout the year. Other disaster volunteers that have the training but are only going to be called in if we have a, a more major disaster so there's really volunteering op opportunities for everyone uh, to fit whatever time you have available and whatever your interests are it's wonderful to know how important the American Red Cross is we um, we have more than 41 fires on an annual basis they're the first ones there to either help with the firemen with food um, but they take those families and they house them. So, Karen, you're doing an immaculate job. Um, the breakfast is coming up in May. We hope that we can invite many of you there. It's very nice to have you as my special guest. Well, thank you for having me. And, and thank you all for your support of American Red Cross. And thank you. Uh, Maryland has been a longtime supporter of American Red Cross, and it's really, really appreciated. Thanks. See you next time.